Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I heard Aries, my name is Chelsea and this is a channel where we do all Aries readings. And today we're gonna take a look here and see um, about what you don't see coming, okay? We're gonna take a look at the most significant situation that you don't see coming. It will not, oh, it's a little fuzzy. Um, this is nothing that has happened, right? So it hasn't happened yet. You might have to, it's future energy. Maybe it could be starting to happen. I don't know what's going to come out, um, but it hasn't happened yet. We're going to see what you don't see coming. And it's the most significant um, energy for the person who is watching this, who needs the message the most. All right. I usually do this off camera and I forgot. So let me just do this real quick right now. Right. This is for the Aries. Who needs the message the most? What you don't see coming. I mean, you can bookmark it and you can come back to it, but this is a kind of like what you need to know, but what you don't see, right? You don't know you need to know it yet, but you need to know it now. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take a look here. This is for Aries. Sun, moon, Venus, and rising. Holy Spirit. Ooh. Spirit guides and angels, please allow me to deliver a clear message here for the Aries Collective. Um, this is at the bottom of the deck with the th this. Did you see how this flipped out in my hand? <laughs> it's like spirit just wanted to give it to me just now. It just flipped out in my hand like this, the world card. So uh, maybe there's a cycle that's coming to an end. It's been a long time coming. And I saw also saw the Wheel of Fortune. Could have been a very hurtful, painful cycle. And with the Wheel of Fortune showing up there underneath that card, things are going to be changing for the better. All right. So that's always good to hear. That could just be one message the spirit wanted me to give somebody. Maybe for you and the rest of the message may not. Re Look at that. It fell on the table again. It fell on the table again. And I'm seeing the three of swords back here again. Um, well, let's see what happens. All right. This is for the Aries who need the message the most, but they don't. I see coming, but it's going to be very significant. What you don't see coming, but it's very significant. Let's see. All right. What do we have here for Aries? Sun, Moon, Venus, and Rising. What do they not see coming? It's the main situation, the first part out. Yeah. Ten of Wands in reverse. All right. Um, it kind of came like this. So I'm going to say it was in reverse. Ten of Wands in reverse. Feels like putting down burdens. Feels like putting down a lot. Okay. So maybe something was very heavy. You could have had a lot of responsibilities. Um, everything was on your shoulders. When I see the 10 of wands, I see someone here who probably shouldn't be doing all this work by themselves, but they are. Okay. Feeling very bogged down with a lot. You're carrying a lot of weight, a lot of baggage, and you don't have to. You either realize that you don't need to be carrying it by yourself you realize that it might be unhealthy for you, or you finally get an opportunity where you can just drop it all, okay? Sometimes it's the universe, it's the ebbs and flows of life that just has this all on your back, on your shoulders, and the energy changes, and it find, you're finally free from all of these burdens. So seeing this in the in reverse is letting me know that there's some sort of difficult ending coming to an There's some sort of difficulties or hardships that is coming to an end. What is the challenge here when this happens for Aries? What do they need to know? The death card. I feel like the biggest thing for you, Aries, and this is just human sometimes, tens represent a lot or could be a long period of time that this has been going on. Okay. A significant situation that's been very hard for you for a long time. A lot of times when we are touched by trauma or damaged by trauma or affected by trauma is a better word. When it's finally gone, um, when it's finally time to heal, when it's finally time to release it, sometimes, depending on how severe that was, it could be very difficult to just let go. It could be very difficult sometimes because you're so used to feeling a certain type of pain or heaviness that when it's finally gone, you don't even know how to embrace the peace or the new beginning or the happiness because I'm seeing the challenge here as the death card and the death card talks about transformations. It's time to change. It's time to let something go. It's time to allow something to end so a new beginning to, can happen. But for this to be in the challenge, that may be difficult for you to let something go. Now, depending on what it is, 
We don't always have to just let it go and erase it out of our mind because sometimes it could be something very difficult, like a death or something that was very painful that happened. But you learn how to not carry it in a certain way, right? Or you learn how to that maybe it could be, to me, it feels like a situation in particular that you may have had to take all the slack yourself. Like you had to pick up all the work on yourself. feels like nobody understood or you were just doing a lot and nobody even knew, okay? Nobody even knew. But the death card here is saying that the challenge here is that something is ending so something new can begin. You need to let go of something, Aries, okay? You have to let something go. All right. Let's see here. During this situation, what does spirit want you focusing on? letting something go. Five of Cups here. The Five of Cups talks about releasing something that was lost, something that did not work out. Sometimes it's changing your perspective here on a situation that didn't work out because when you turn around behind you, you realize that there's two cups behind you. If it's a relationship, if it's an emotional situation, um, you just have to turn around and say, you know what, I'm gonna keep moving on. And guess what? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, God, the universe is going to have something better or something else for you, right? That's going to compensate. So that's what spirit really wants you to focus on. I'm really feeling like there's an Aries that will be struggling. And, you know, you guys all know that I lost my mother. So I, that's, it's not a death that I'm feeling, but I am feeling a heaviness. That's what it's making me think of. I keep looking at her picture that's right in front of me. So I know the type of pain that I experienced through that, or that I'm still experiencing through that. And it's something here where it's time, not necessarily because you'll never get over a death, but there's a heaviness around this. So I'm just, I don't want to correlate it to that, but I feel like somebody could out there could be experiencing a heaviness like I'm experiencing. Um, like you move on, you do certain things, but then there's times where you just still feel so heavy, right? Spirit is saying that there's a new beginning coming in for someone with the death card here. The death card talks about transformation, meaning that one thing is ending and a new thing is a beginning. I almost get the sense of that, and it's not a death for whoever I'm speaking to though, but I'm getting the sense of it's something that hurts you very bad, right? That had an effect on you. It could have been a breakup. It could have been anything. It could have been a divorce. But until you release this thing, until you release this thing, it's almost like you won't be able to experience the joy and happiness that God has for you, okay? Because I keep seeing the four of wands at the bottom of the deck. So I feel like there's something coming, all right? Tell me about why this is happening. What happened in the past? What happened in the past for all of this to happen? We got the eight of cups. So walking away from something that was not good for you emotionally, that could have been very difficult for you. The Knight of Cups at the bottom of the deck, you could have been dealing with a love bomber or a romantic situation that you thought was going to take off or be something more. It doesn't have to be just romance, but I'm seeing here in the past, you had to walk away from something, some sort of emotions that were not healthy for you. Um, what is manifesting because of this situation here for Aries? So we got the lovers here. Feels like a breakup or a disconnect. Um, it feels like you're going to be letting go of something that you thought was once in a, or you thought at one point was in alignment with you, and then you realize that it wasn't. And it was very deep. Okay. The lovers can give off as a soulmate. Okay. It really can. Somebody that you had a soul contract with, a spiritual connection with. Um, maybe at one point it was good, maybe not so good. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it just was never, I don't want to say was it not good, but maybe you didn't really want to let go of it, but you realized that it was unhealthy. When I'm seeing the lovers in reverse, it tells me that at one point something was in alignment with you and then it's not. And so you have to break free from it. And when you have to break free from it, it's very difficult, right? Because if something at one point is in alignment with you, that there's an attachment, there's a contract, maybe there's even a tie, maybe there's a, maybe there's a soul tie. Um, even if it's not a lover, it could be a job, it could be a situation where you thought, this is it, this is what puts me in alignment, this is, you know, 
my other part, my other half, you know, this is something that I'm connected to. And again, even when things don't work out down the line, it doesn't mean that at one point it was meant for you. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like at one point, whatever this was, was meant for you. You were supposed to have it. You were supposed to be in alignment with it. And then you weren't. Okay. Um, just Gemini energy. I'm seeing Scorpio energy here. Um, and I'm seeing fire and water. All right. Well, let's see here. What's coming towards Aries in the future because of this situation here? I'm seeing the two of pentacles. It wanted to come in reverse, but I picked it up here. The two of pentacles. Now, the two of pentacles can be regaining balance. Things were topsy-turvy. There was decisions that needed to be made, but were difficult to make because you were out of balance. Okay, tell me more. Tell me about the energy that Aries is going to be in while this is happening. I'm seeing the tower, the tower. This could be a shock, something surprising, unexpected, but I also see the tower as a clearing, a clearing, a cleansing of energy. Okay. The tower falls because something was not built on a sturdy foundation. Do you see this tower being built on this jagged um, edge of rocks? It wasn't built on a flat foundation. It's like a relationship. Maybe it was built on a lie. Um, maybe it was a situation where it was, if it was a job, the, the, um, the fine print wasn't very clear. Right. And so everything starts crumbling down or you were tricked into a situation. Okay. Um, the tower comes to, if you don't walk away from that situation, maybe you don't know to walk away from it. Maybe you've had signs to walk away from it, but you don't. The tower is spirit stepping in and saying, Hey, we about to clear this shit out. <laughs> because you're not seeing that this is not good for you. So in a sense, it is a good... Oh, did you see that glitch? Okay. In a sense, it's a very good thing for you, although it could be very unexpected. So you could be feeling a lot of upheaval, a lot of changes, but just know that it's it's a clearing or it's a cleansing of energy. Tell me about what's in Aries' environment while this is happening. I'm seeing the page of wands, messages, a messenger. This could be exciting news, a new opportunity here. Um, this could be a creation here or a creative endeavor that is getting up off the ground. It could be a friend. I always see the page of wands as exciting news coming in or exciting messages. Four of five of swords, um, the sun and the ace of pentacles. What is Aries hopes and fears here around this situation? Let's see here. The strength. Hoping that you're going to be able to get through this situation. Praying that you're going to be, have the strength and the wisdom here, the discernment maybe to know when not to act or to act. Tell me about the outcome and then we're going to clarify the judgment. Wow. So this is about like receiving a calling, making a very big decision here to release something or to go in a different direction. But there is a judgment here. There's a decision being made. And it's a big one because it's going to have an effect on your life and your future. Let's clarify this and see what's going on. Let's use this. All right, I'm going to use the gold ones. I haven't used these in a while. Let's see here. Let's start with the Ten of Wands in reverse. What is the Ten of Wands here in reverse for Aries? What's going on here with the Ten of Wands in reverse for Aries? Seven of Cups. This could be the end of some sort of illusion, confusion, Five of Swords, manipulation. Tell me about the Ten of Wands in reverse. Two of Pentacles. This could be juggling. Again, feeling imbalanced, but this is saying that it's the end of this situation. This could be financial situations um, that are in the ba imbalance. Tell me about the Ten of Wands in reverse. Give me one more. What is this talking about? And the star. So releasing this hardship. It feels like somebody went through a period where 
there was a lot of inconsistencies. There was a lot of confusions, illusions. It's almost like somebody misguided you in some way here. Or there was emotions. Okay. Yeah, I still, still see the five of swords. It's like a period here where there was there was no clarity. There was a lot of ups and downs. It's like somebody fed you some sort of emotional situation. Like they were telling you one thing. They wanted to make you feel a certain way. And it never was the truth. And there was a long period of experiencing that. A lot of ups and downs I keep getting here. And there's this decision here to release something. And the star card here brings on healing, hope renewed, a wish fulfillment here. So the, the Ten of Wands is an ending of some sort of very difficult cycle, difficult ending of confusion, maybe even being juggled, hardship, um, and being, I want to say being led on. Tell me about the death card, which is the challenge. I just heard it's time for you to let something go. The magician here. So the magician we know talks about new things coming in, you creating new things. And we know the death card here, I said already, is the ending of one thing so a new thing can begin. For this to be in a challenged position, Aries, this quite tells me that this literally, okay, so either you, and if there's a 10 of wands here, are holding on to something that already ended. Okay, I feel like that's what it is. And again, there's no judgment here, okay? It's just that what I'm seeing is, and we've all been through this, is like when something very difficult happens to us, it kind of permeates, it kind of, you relive it, you know? It, there could be triggers and there's something here where you may not even know it. It could be subconscious, I don't know, but it feels like you're holding on to a situation Unfortunately, I do feel like that, yeah, there was, there was psychological aspects of it where you could have been dealing with someone who was intentionally manipulating mind, playing mind games with you. So that is very difficult to get out of. We always say, you know, sometimes mental abuse is worse than physical abuse. You know, I don't know if I could use that word on YouTube, but anyways, um, sometimes that's the case and it's starting to get jittery. So I'm going to start hurrying up. I don't know why that's happening. Sometimes the mental abuse is, is worse than physical abuse in the aspect that the physical bruises usually will heal. If you're blessed, right, they will heal. Um, and the mental abuse lingers on. Um, and here I am, keep using that word. But anyways, that's what I'm just, there's some the situation like that. Okay. There's a situation like that. Cause it's like, the Ten of Wands here is like releasing all of that confusion, all that manipulation with the Two of Pentacles and healing from it. With the Death card and the Magician here, this is telling me that the biggest challenge is to let something go so something new could come in and manifest. Okay, give me one more for the Death card. Yeah. Six of Pentacles. This is a, some sort of blessing here from the universe, but it's also you getting what you deserve. You getting back what you deserve. Some of you could be getting back out there and dating if this is a relationship thing. Some of you, this could be compensation. If you're waiting on a certain type of compensation, this is you getting something that you deserve. Tell me about the five of cups here for Aries, what spirit wants Aries to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. I said that when you turn away, from what had what happened, what had happened was, <laughs> when you turn away what was lost, what's behind you, the Ace of Pentacles with this Two of Cups, a new beginning, a blessing. So this could be money. It could definitely be money. This could be a new beginning in love, a commitment. Um, but that's what Spirit wants you to focus on, kind of like getting out of these emotions so you can receive some blessing here that's literally, it feels like it's waiting on you. Knight of Pentacles, yeah. Tell us about the lovers in reverse. What is this about? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's about breaking a soul tie. It's about breaking a soul tie. I feel like somebody is still energetically connected to somebody who did a number on them. With the seven of swords here and the lovers in reverse, to somebody that you had some sort of soul tie connection with that you loved deeply. Oh, Lord. Oh, the private parts are showing. <laughs> 
you had some, this is a very strong connection. Like I said, at one point you were in alignment. At one point we are in alignment with people who are supposed to teach us lessons, right? Because if we never were attracted to them, if we never gravitated towards them, we could never have that relationship that was supposed to teach us, okay? So at one point you were connected to someone here who was supposed to teach you, but what you discovered was that there was a lot of mistruths, there was a lot of lies, dishonesties, and trickery. Um, I feel that that tie is breaking. So that's what's manifesting through this. The more you heal and you release this situation, the more that the soul tie is breaking. We always ask how we do cord cutting rituals. A lot of times those cord cutting rituals are done through healing, okay? Because people are always asking, why don't they work? I've done many and I've learned this from doing them myself, okay? I learned that when I release a certain person with love, it's broken. And I've done many, many cord cutting rituals because you don't have to just do cord cutting rituals with lovers. Sometimes you have to do cord cutting rituals with uh, friends. Sometimes you have to do cord cutting rituals with people that you work with. <laughs> like you have to do it. And when you can heal that anger or you can heal that, I always like to say sometimes abuse or things like that that happen that are very tragic, they live like a thumbprint or an imprint on your brain. Like it's, it's imprinted on you. Um, and, and I'm, uh, as I'm saying that I'm seeing like, okay. So as I'm seeing, as I'm saying that I was seeing somebody like in the old times where you see in criminal things, like people dusting something away, they're dusting the thumbprint away. So I don't know what that's about. Um, uh, but hopefully there's no crime scenes, anything like that. I don't know what that's about, but anyways, um, that's how soul ties are broken, right? You could do core cutting rituals all day long, but if you're not doing the inner work, it's not, it's a lot of times it's not going to work. Okay. That's how you free yourself from situations. Let me keep going. Cause I don't know why it's glitching. Tell me about the two of pentacles. I'm seeing the three of cups. Tell me about the two of pentacles. Oh Lord. So I just heard in my head, remember the two of pentacles was supposed to be in reverse. So thank you for my spirit guides are telling me that because I have it upright. Two of pentacles in reverse, three of cups, and the queen of pentacles. I kind of like this. Tell me about the three of cups. Wow, I like this. All right, yeah. So ace of swords here at the bottom of the deck. Now the three of cups can talk about celebrations. It can talk about weddings. We sometimes the the um the three of cups is kind of like a reception card, you know, people partying and things like that. You could be reconnecting with a soulmate, a past life soulmate, but when I'm seeing this, I'm seeing here I'm seeing here people are happy for you connecting to a partner. This could be a commitment, a new beginning. Two of pentacles in reverse lets me know that there is no confusion within this situation, within this relationship. Literally, in the future of late releasing this energy here, there is a partnership. You've got the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. Three of Cups here, okay? This could be like where you're finally meeting your match, finally meeting somebody to commit, and people are happy. This could actually be a wedding with the Three of Cups here, okay? Tell me about the Tower, the energy that you're in, Aries, while this is all happening. So that's what's coming towards you because of the situation. We have the Moon. Something is exposed, unexpected. I'm also feeling like this is the subconscious, eight of wands, new opportunities. This is positive communication, quick moving energy coming in. Tell me more about the tower, eight of cups and the eight of pentacles. You got three eights, eight, 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 eight of wands, eight of cups, eight of pentacles. Okay. I feel like this eight of wands here is some sort of communication. And the communication actually gives you the energy or the strength to walk away from something with the Eight of Cups. And then the Eight of Pentacles is rebuilding, rebuilding yourself. Eight talks about selves as well. So the tower here is saying that something unexpected is exposed with the moon because the moon talks about hidden motives, secrets, things that were done to, in the dark come to light. And then you get the eight of wands. So there's communication coming in unexpectedly and suddenly, and it could be about this, this moon energy, something that was hidden. And then you walk away with the eight of cups and then the eight of pentacles you're rebuilding. So this is all your energy here, Aries. I don't know if there's, it could even just be an epiphany, right? It could be a breakthrough. Ooh, I just saw something. 
I don't like when it gets dark up here. I just saw something. Um, It could be a breakthrough, an emotional breakthrough. It could be with the tower and the moon. Like you, this could be the healing. Tell me about the tower and the moon one more time. Or this could be communication here. Permits. This could be from some, so this could be like, when this is your energy here, this could be getting advice from someone. This could be from a mentor. But I'm seeing here when Spirit's saying this is you going within with the, the hermit. You going within. So this is you doing your own healing work. This is you having your own breakthrough. This isn't anybody telling you anything or this is you having your own breakthrough, your own with the moon here. This is subconscious. This could be self-talk that you used to do that you undo. So there's some sort of radical transformation in your life, Aries, that takes place in your personality and your healing. Tell me about the page of wands in your environment. Oh, goodness. Three of wands wanted to come out. Two of swords. Move to that three of wands. It could be options. Three of pentacles. So a lot of threes here. There could be decisions and options you could date. Like if this is, you know. But I'm seeing here, what is that? Tower, something unexpected. Something that you've been waiting for. Knight of Cups, Three of Pentacles, growth. Somebody wanting to... Oh. Somebody wanting to rebuild. That's what that is. So somewhere along the way... This is quite confusing. And I don't know if something, not confusing to me, but it will be confusing to you. Or this is a block. This is a block. Tell me about this two of swords. It's not confusing. Tell me about the two of swords. Tell me about the two of swords. Mm -hmm. It's a block. <laughs> Somebody tries to block. Can I say cock block YouTube? I'm going to just say cock block. It feels like somebody tries to block. Uh, you're going to get a message or communication here. It's almost like somebody waits to do something. We get this message sometimes. Somebody waits to do something. Either they're lurking. It could just be timing. I don't know. I'm not getting an energy of spying because I'm not getting an energy of spying. But I am getting communication. I am getting somebody coming in. Um, so yeah, they have to know. They have to know if it's a block thing because I'm seeing... You happy with the four of wands here. I'm seeing someone here who tries to come in confused, to confuse the situation. Love bombing with the knight of cups. Let me show you the cards, okay? We got the page of wands. We got the two of swords, all right? You know, somebody comes in with some sort of message, a choice and asking you, right? They're very excited. Page of wands is passion. Um, you know, maybe trying to get back into your life. This could be why this is all happening here. Got the three of wands here. This person could be a type of person who keeps their options open. Three of pentacles, though. It feels like they're the message that they're wanting to give you is that they're wanting to rebuild. Okay. They're wanting to, they're willing to wait for you to come to their side or to forgive them. Right. We got the knight of cups. Right. So that's what makes me think this is, could be somebody here who is like, telling you sweet nothings, love bombing you, right? Trying to make you fall in love or to give into something. And then you have the 10 of swords. Boom. Then there's betrayal. Well, the tower actually came from first, the tower and then the 10 of swords. Okay. Can you see all that? Yeah. It's like, if you fall for, I'm not to say you will fall. If you fall for this person's love bombing or confusing conversation because it feels like with this two of swords, somebody is twisting words, trying to make you not able to make a decision, right? They might even keep you waiting. It's something here of like somebody trying to hook you to string you along again. And then boom, tower, 10 of swords. Not saying that you're necessarily going to fall for it, but they're saying that is the energy. That is the intentions of someone. Okay. That is the intentions of someone. I want to clarify that one more time. Tell me about the Ten of Swords. Yeah, this is a cycle. This was a cycle. This is possibly a lesson that you've learned before. This could have been a karmic cycle. Mm. Tell us about the judgment and the outcome here for Aries. The strength. And that's what you're hoping for. 
you're hoping to have the strength because the strength already came out in the hopes and fears. You're hoping, maybe and fearing all at the same time, that hopefully that you have the strength to make a decision to finally close some chapter in your life. And, and I'm, I'm not saying just walking away because some of you could have already walked away from this person physically. This is like closing a chapter of the emotional stuff that is still lingering with the judgment. Tell me more about the strength. Yep. The three of swords. Three of swords. See the judgment. When you see the judgment here, I can't show too close because they naked too. Everybody naked in the tarot. These coffins, this is dead. These are dead people. The coffins have been opened back up, right? There's this call, right? Calling. Sometimes this talks about our emotions, our feelings, where something arises again, okay? A situation comes back up and you have to make the final call, the final decision. Do you bury this for once and for all or do you revisit, do you let it to come back in? And when the strength clarifying this, this is something that's going to take a lot of strength to do. Why? Because this was very painful. So there could be some old wounds that come back up. That's why this could be coming up. Okay, that there's some sort of old wound or trigger that's coming up. And sometimes, this is what I've learned from my experience, that when a situation from a past that you felt like you have put to rest and you have closed the chapter and it's coming back up and all of a sudden you're feeling triggered, maybe you're even dreaming about certain people or things like that coming up, is either one or two things. They're getting close to you, they're getting close to you energetically, or your spirit guides are saying, hey, we have something good coming in for you, but we want to make sure that this energy is completely gone or healed from you. Like this, there's a little bit of residual energy that's still a little bit of this, you know, we kind of, we're poking you, you know, your spear guys are poking you and saying, hey, this, this could be a trigger for something new coming in, right? You're getting a new relationship coming in. You don't want to bring up old stuff in a new relationship because you didn't deal with what you needed to deal with when you had the time to deal with it. So I am always an advocate of taking breaks in between relationships. Like you don't have to jump from one relationship to the next. You don't have time to heal, you know? Um, you don't have time to clear certain things up. Tell me one more about the judgment, the Knight of Swords. So this could be coming at you quick, okay? This could be coming at you quick. This could be a message that triggers you. This could be communication that comes in that triggers you and brings something up. Yeah, the sun here. But I feel like it's almost like this. If this is your spirit guides, if this is your, you know, your spirit guides that are doing this, that are making this come up to you quick all at once, it's because they want you to move away from it. And because something is ha happening for you very quickly, very fast. I keep looking in that direction because I keep seeing something. Two of wands and the sun here and the nine of cups. They're wanting you to move away from something so you can have your happiness. Okay, look at that as I pulled it. Ten of Cups, right on the money. Um, wanting you to have this happily ever after. So you may be asking yourself, you may be wanting a personal reading. <laughs> you know, asking yourself, why am I dreaming about so-and-so all of a sudden? Why am I getting signs and synchronicities about so-and-so? Or... Why am I triggered about so-and-so or this situation all of a sudden? It's nobody's doing anything to you. It's it's the fact that there's there's something that you need to deal with. Okay, and we go back to this Ten of Wands in reverse and the Seven of Cups. There is time to let go of illusions is not even the right word. Maybe you could be having phantom daydreams, you know, where something, a situation replays in your head. But I feel like it stems from a soul tie. Now, could you may need to do some sort of core cutting ritual? Sure. But know this, it goes along with healing as well, okay? Um, Sure, right? Let's um let's shuffle. I'll pull a few cards and see what comes out. So 
So you got the card of first date. Definitely feels like a new relationship. We see that with the King of Queen, King and Queen of Pentacles coming up. It's like Spirit is trying to prepare you, okay, for something new to come into your life. You are protected spiritually and physically. So if there was ever a question about that. And you know what else? I want to say this as well. Saying, Seeing that you are protected spiritually and physically. The fact that your ancestors are waking you up to a situation. That lets you know how close they are to you. How spiritually in tuned you are. Like that's how, that's how your spirit team is working for you. You know what I'm saying? You've probably been praying for something. And they're like, look, we're helping you get this thing. We're helping you prepare you. So, so this is very important to see. You are protected spiritually and physically. And you, something else did come out too in reverse. Someone is jealous of your vibe, evil eye. We got to do the right thing. Someone wants to come back from your past. Mm. That could be why you're... Look at that. They're literally talking to you. Firm boundaries. Firm boundaries are needed. Firm boundaries are needed. Okay, that's it. At the bottom of the deck, hidden motives. What I tell you, I'm telling you, um, this came out in the weekly or the, the mid-monthly as well. Change your diet. It's slowing down your success. So somebody may need that message. But what I tell you, it... You might, I'm not saying that you're going to be weak and allow it to happen, but somebody, and this happens a lot, right before you have a breakthrough or you have a new beginning, there's always some sort of test or trick or, you know, I was listening to something earlier about, um, man, I'm going to share it on the community page, but it was some sort of, some video about a woman. It was a woman video. Okay. But I was listening to it. <laughs> I'll share it for the ladies out there. I was listening to it because I was like, hmm, let me, this sounds interesting. I'm going to listen to this on the way to the gym. And I started listening to it. And it's things that, you know, I feel like I knew, but sometimes you just need to hear things from other teachers. And it just struck me because it was like, wow, it made me think that, and I don't know what it was, but it made me realize that, wow, a certain relationship that I had after another relationship, I needed to have that. I needed to have that because at the time you feel like you get sick of lessons, but I felt like, wow, that really taught me about my worth and it elevated my worth a little bit more because, you know, I needed to have that, but it didn't click until I heard somebody else say it, you know? And so you really do have to have gratitude and you really have to embrace those situations because I'm telling you, that situation pissed me off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For a long time. Because I felt like I dated somebody and I'm like, I didn't have to give you a chance, right? We didn't, it was probably about for about a month or so that we dated. It wasn't that long, but they, were, they did something. And I was just like, and that was that, you know? Never spoke to them. Well, I spoke to them again because they, didn't get the hint, but <laughs> I spoke to them again, but they didn't, but I never gave them another chance. And I was proud of myself because I never gave them another chance. But I was like, why did that have to happen? Like spirit, why did that even have to happen? And then it wasn't until that was like maybe two, three years ago. I'm listening to this video today and I'm thinking, and I'm, I heard, I'm like, that's why that had to happen. And I'm saying this because I get this a lot in the comment section about, Oh, another lesson. Oh, no, I can't. I'm so sick of lessons. I'm so sick of... But, I mean, that's what we're here on earth for. <laughs> like, the hell? like, that's what you came here for, to learn. That's what you came here. So all of life is going to be full of lessons. That's it. That's what we're here for. We're learning from experiencing people, experiencing situations, from heartbreak, from happiness. We're learning. That's what we're here to do. And the, the sooner you grasp that, the easier it honestly will be to let shit go. You know, I think we hold on to stuff so much and take things so personal. Like, why me? Why did they do this to me? Why? Just take it as an experience and learn from it and let it go. You will be so much happier. Okay. People ask me all the time, well, how are you getting through this? And how are you healing from this? And damn, you've been through a lot. You know why? Because the best thing somebody could have taught me to do was let some shit go. Even the worst of the worst shit that's happened to me, the betrayals, after a while, you're like, you know what? I learned from it, all right? I needed to learn from that and now I'm done with it. 
you free yourself. You really do. And I feel like I need to have this conversation because that is the gist of this message in the beginning for someone who is, you're, go, you're getting there. It's about to happen for you where you're going to have this epiphany of letting something go, but you've been holding on to something for a very long time. And it feels so much better. It feels so much free. You, you, you let go, you clear up so much space for new things to come in. And you just say to yourself, you know what? That person did that thing to me, not because it was even, maybe it was personal to them at that one time, but they, even that person didn't know that they were being used by spirit. Even the person who betrayed you or hurt you in some way, they did not know they were being used by a spirit. Okay. And it was to teach you something. Okay. It was to teach you something. And once you get that lesson and you release it, you can move on to the next thing and you can be happy. All right. So that's what I have for you guys. It was my TED talk. Talk to you later.